Good evening. Uh, welcome again to the British Library. We are now live on a Friday evening here in the British Library galleries in our latest exhibition, Paddington, the story of a bear, which uh, I opened to the public this morning uh, and it will run through till the end of October. Uh, my name is Jamie Andrews. I lead our public programming and our learning work here at the library. And I'm delighted this evening to be joined uh, by two special guests around the Browns family kitchen table. Uh, on my immediate left is Karen Jankel, who is, of course, the daughter of Michael Bond, the man who, as we heard, uh, more than six decades ago created Paddington Bear and in so doing created such joy for all of us ever since. Uh, and also with us around the table is my colleague at the British Library, Alison Bailey. Uh, Alison is a uh, curator of printed books and she is the lead curator of this exhibition. So thank you both for joining us. Um, we're going to talk for about 10 minutes or so, uh, but we want to hear from you at home. So as of now, please feel free to be typing your questions uh, in the dialogue box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, feel free to direct questions to Karen about, about Paddington, about her father, uh, uh, or to Alison about uh, the British Library collections uh, and her curation of this exhibition. Uh, or just share thoughts, uh, memories even, uh, of your enjoyment and reading of Paddington. We'd love to hear from you and we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Uh, but for now, Karen, I'm going to start with you, if I may. Uh, we've, we've just had a great walk around the exhibition. Um, tell us what you thought of it and, and how do you feel uh, seeing your father's work uh, and Paddington celebrated here at the British Library? Well, first of all, I think it's an absolutely wonderful exhibition, beautifully put together. Um, it's always quite strange seeing items in a glass case that mm. normally sit on a <laughs> shelf at home. But there's something rather wonderful about seeing them all brought together to tell the whole story of Paddington. And um, it's absolutely, I'm delighted to be here. Fantastic. Tell us a, a couple of the items that, that are your personal items you've lent to us. Um, well, there's uh, one of the uh, illustrations uh, done by um, R.W. Alley, Bob Alley, uh, mm -hmm. which is very special because it was a book that I actually wrote with my father, Paddington Goes to Hospital. So that's got a very special meaning. And probably the first edition of Paddington book, which my father dedicated to his own parents. So mm -hmm. obviously that's got personal uh, meaning to me as well. Yeah, very special. Um, I, I hesitate to say you're as old as Paddington. I'm going to say you're as young as Paddington. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say that is because you were born the same year that that first Paddington book, uh, A Bear Called Paddington, was published. So, so quite extraordinarily, really, you have literally grown up in parallel with, with Paddington. So I, tell us what yes, that was like. Yes, well, the, the 13th is always very lucky in our family. Paddington, the first book, was published on the 13th of October. I was born exactly two months earlier on the uh, 13th of August. And so by the time I was aware of Paddington, he was very much established. He was very much part of the, the, the family. So I've really never known a life without Paddington. The only problem is that every time he has a major anniversary, like his 60th, I, I'm <laughs> reminded of just <laughs> how old I am. <laughs> Can't escape it. Um, did your father read you, I wonder, did he read you the Paddington stories? Did he maybe try them out on you before he, he published he, them as you got older? He, he did read them to me, but never until he'd finished them. Um, oh. So he certainly didn't try them out. He, he wasn't, because he was a writer he didn't ever just tell stories off the top of his head he had to not only write them but make sure that he was happy with the, the finished article so he, he would read them before they were published but um, but he certainly didn't try out ideas interesting now, I think I read that, that mr. and mrs. Brown who who of course take Paddington in uh, when they find him at Paddington station that they were at least partly based on your father's parents or your, grand, your, your grandparents. Um, yeah. is, do you have a sense of, of who, who your father was drawing on for, for the character of Paddington himself? I often think that there were a sort of elements of my, my own father in Paddington. It's, it's mm. a, he was a bit of an amalgam, really. My, my grandfather, his father, was, was very polite. Mm -hmm. and he always wore a hat, which he raised. And so that definitely influenced Paddington. Um, but I think he, he's a bit of a, a mix of different, different people. It's, um, mm. But my father had a few Paddington-type characteristics <laughs> himself, yeah. I think. And as you grew older, I wonder, I don't know if it's life imitating art or art imitating life, did you... 
I wonder if, um, if anything, any the adventures or scrapes that maybe you got into maybe found their way into the, into the Paddington <laughs> stories? <laughs> Just a few of them. I, I, I think uh, most writers ba base their stories on, on real life experiences and my father was no exception. But certainly as I was growing up and I, I did things like when I learnt to, to drive, Paddington took his driving test. Um, mm. I, I, I'm glad to say I was a slightly better driver than Paddington. I'm relieved to hear it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but definitely go, going uh, through, through the years you can recognise things that, uh, that I did that, that got into the stories. Oh, wow. Well, look, let me turn for a minute to, to you, Alison. Um, and firstly, I mean, did you, you must have read Paddington, um, I imagine, growing up as well? Yes, so I, my brother and I have a recollection of the books being on his shelves and our mm. parents read stories to us both quite often so I would have heard them that way mm -hmm. and then I'm very familiar with the animation from the 1970s even though to be frank I'd have been a teenager then but I'm mm. still I obviously watch them and also I've read Paddington stories to my own children uh, they're now adults but when they were small sort mm -hmm. of Oh good and um, you we asked you to curate this exhibition I guess um, maybe coming up two years ago and what we didn't anticipate was basically everything that happened <laughs> since last year. So um, I imagine this was uh, the way that you curated this, this exhibition was not only unanticipated, but just completely different to anything you've done before. So, so tell us a bit how that worked practically, if nothing else. Yes, yeah, so I was sort of appointed in March 2020. Oh, yeah. And so I was about two weeks on site and then... After that, obviously, things changed completely. And I suppose maybe the, one of the biggest things for me is that um, we didn't really have ready access on site. And so we didn't have ready access to the material. So I spent some very focused days on when we were allowed to come in, standing up in the mount room in the exhibition with the mask on, largely by myself, mm -hmm. standing up at a barrow, looking at things very quickly and writing copious notes to make sure I'd absolutely uh, tied down the kind of details of the book and all the storyline. But one thing I wanted to say was Rhea in the film mentioned that this is very much a kind of team effort and I was very reliant really on Rhea and the four people who, from exhibitions who work very closely as a team. So, for example, if, if them, they were on site then they would look at something and tell us, you know, whether it was going to be suitable for the exhibition, etc. So, so it, it, maybe it made you even more reliant on other people mm. and, and the fact yeah. that people would put themselves out for you. And then the other thing I suppose I noticed that we... We had to do talk about loans remotely. I mean, this is the first time I've had the good fortune to meet Karen. So it's lovely to meet you in person. But we had to do things, you know, by, via technology. Uh, and also, I wasn't quite sure what size things were. I mean, people sent measurements, mm. but uh, in my head, I, when I actually finally saw them, I was quite surprised. Some things were smaller than I thought. Some <laughs> things were bigger than I thought. But anyway, so it's a, it's a huge relief to me to find that everything's come together. It all fitted in. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, and you, oh, you said you, 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 of course, read Paddington as you grew up, so you came to the exhibition with some knowledge. But, um, but of course, as you began to research and, uh, and read more about, about Paddington and Michael Bond, I'm sure you learnt, you learnt a lot as well. What, what was the, say, a few things that most surprised you um, that you learnt along, along the way? So I suppose one of the things was quite how many stories there are about Paddington. Uh, I mean, there are just hundreds, really. Uh, so that was one thing. Um, and one thing you were talking about before, a bit about the way that Michael's family influenced the different characters, so that for, sort of as we touched on already, that um, Michael's father, both in his politeness and the raising of the hat, sort of was fed into the description of Paddington, but also in his dislike of DIY, sort of fed into the, pic the picture of Mr mm -hmm. Brown. So that was interesting. And also, I suppose, the sheer range of different illustrators. So in the exhibition, we've got about 11 different illustrators of Paddington, and that's not all the illustrators there are. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, just, we just couldn't put absolutely everybody in. So it was just the sheer breadth and wealth of it, really. Yeah. Did we have everything in the British Library you were expecting um, that we would have, that we should have, or were there, were there gaps <laughs> that you discovered along the way? Ooh, well, uh, <laughs> I think we had most of the things I was expecting, mm -hmm. maybe one or two gaps. Okay. <laughs> um, and Karen, going back to you, actually, Alison was talking about uh, what it was like to curate an exhibition in, in a pandemic. How do you think Paddington would have coped in, in a pandemic, in lockdown? I think he would have coped pretty well. He's yeah. very helpful there, so I'm sure he would have been uh, very helpful to his neighbours. And uh, I think the only thing he'd have struggled a bit was wearing a mask, because I think it might have got stuck on his whiskers. It might, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we heard there that, that um, and in the video as well, that Paddington is, of course he's loved in this country, but he's loved around the world. And um, when we were walking around, we saw uh, editions in Japanese and Finnish and... Uh, I think it's been translated into, into most languages. 
Um, it's a question to both of you, but starting with you, Karen, what, what is it about Paddington that just connects with people, I suppose both geographically but also across generations? I think, first of all, it's his character. I yeah. think he's a very likeable, lovable character. And uh, the fact that he's very well-meaning. And I think the stories themselves, although disasters always seem to befall Paddington, mm. you kind of have that comfort of knowing everything's going to come out all right in the end. And I mm -hmm. think that that's sort of universally that that would appeal to, to people. So that's probably why they, they're so popular all over the world. Yeah. And Alison? So, yes, uh, well, touching on what, you know, Karen, picking on what Karen said, I think it's, um, you know, everyone, he's just so kind and polite. Uh, it's a very attractive quality and the stories have a uni universal themes of things like home and belonging and that kind of thing they kind of which resonate with people and then there are all the different ways that he's been depicted so people can find him in books films adaptations but underneath he's still that same bear the one who's famed for his uh, politeness and kindness yeah yeah and Paddington must have taken you around the world I guess he has over the mm. years I think that the most exciting country I visited because of Paddington was Peru mm. um, Tell, it, but how, yes. how, tell us how so, Paddington um, is perceived in Peru. Well, until the films came along, Paddington wasn't really known. But um, hmm. the, the great thing is that the films introduced a whole new audience, I think, to, to Paddington. And, and now um, he's popular in, in many other countries. But uh, I think that was the, the country that I, I most wanted to go to. Of course. And I believe the Peruvian ambassador to the UK is one of our guests on this digital, um, on this digital private view. So we're very glad to have him there. Um, as you got older, you talked about what it was like, uh, Karen, growing up with, with Paddington and, and perhaps being read Paddington by your father. How did your perspectives on him change as you, as, as you grew older? I suppose um, he just became so... I mean, he was always real to me, but that much more of a, a member of the family. So hmm. it, it sort of more from, changed from just being in the books to being actually a, a part of our family. Um, it's, it's quite difficult to describe, really, if you haven't grown up with something yourself. But <laughs> so he was, he was a real, a real and, presence. And, in and, and he still very much is. I mean, yeah. that's what's so wonderful. My father's no longer here, but he sort of is through, through Paddington, which is lovely. Oh, wow. And um, Alison, we heard uh, in the film with Ria there that you had some help from, uh, uh, in the curating of the exhibition from, from some local school children. Say a bit more about, about how they work with, with you and with us on this, on this show. Yeah, so we're very lucky, and I understand that some of the pupils and the staff from these schools might be um, actually watching mm -hmm. this, so hello and thanks very much for all your involvement. Um, we work with two local schools in Camden, um, the Year 4 pupils from Argyle Primary School. Mm -hmm. They help devise um, the Marmalade Trail, so you might be able to spot some of the Marmalade splats behind us. So essentially they ask you to react to some of the objects that are in the exhibition either by doing an action or they might ask a question about it, so it helps people engage. And um, we also had help from Year 3 pupils from Edith Neville School, mm -hmm. and we asked them, what's the one thing you'd pack in your suitcase if you were going on a journey like Paddington? And they provided artwork, and that's been digitised, and you can see that at the very end of the exhibition in the Adventures section. I think my favourite one of those is the one thing that one of the children would bring was three Big Macs, <laughs> which I think Paddington would probably approve of. Um, and, 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 and I should say as well that, of course, all of the, all of the uh, local students, the, the children who participated in, in this exhibition, all of their names are credited in the credits panel at yeah. the end of the exhibition, plus their teachers, of course, which is, which yeah. is important. Um, and maybe one more for you, Alison, before we, we open up. Um, obviously, this exhibition's in London. We hope the exhibition will tour COVID willing and, and, and so on. Um, and tour, tour outside London, but, but for us it's really important as a national impact uh, right from the start. Uh, uh, and tell us a bit about the, 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 suit, the Pack Your Suitcase with Paddington campaign that's, that's reaching out to schools across okay. the country. Okay, so that's going to have a national campaign, as you say, that's reaching out to UK, uh, children across the UK, and it's sort of similar to the, to the idea with the Edith Neville School, mm -hmm. which is we're asking children to um, design a suitcase and fill it with things they'd like to take on a journey. And you can find out far more about it by looking on our website, our Discovering Children's Books website. So if you look on the bl.uk website and look under Discover and Learn, you can find out more about it. We've asked some famous authors and illustrators to give us an idea of it, to, to, to show people the kind of thing we have. It offers people an, an opportunity both to provide artwork or written work creatively. Mm -hmm. And the deadline is the next Friday, the 16th of July. And, um, and there are book tokens to be won. There are, so, <laughs> so get, get cracking on that. Um, and I would also say that uh, if you follow uh, BL Learning, BL underscore learning, 
uh, on Twitter that they are reposting uh, really good examples every day of some of the work that the children are, are coming up yeah. with. So look, let's go to um, some questions that are, that are coming in. And uh, well, look, here's the, <laughs> here's the first one for you, uh, Karen, uh, from Layla, who asks, why does he, Paddington, we assume, eat marmalade? Well, when my father wrote the first book, he knew that bears like sweet things, mm -hmm. and um, he himself likes or liked marmalade. <laughs> um, and but it turned out to be rather useful because marmalade has chunks, and Paddington finds the chunks very, very handy for sticking things together. And and tables that he's yes, sawn in yes, half accidentally, yeah. and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Um, and one, well, here's one to both of you from uh, Tash. Uh, who asks, uh, what's your favourite illustration of Paddington? So, uh, uh, Alison, let's start with you. Your favourite... Oh, that's really quite difficult. Uh, but from this exhibition, yeah. I'm very fond of um, one that actually Karen's lent, which is a, a, a Peggy Fortnum illustration of Judy holding Paddington's paw just outside 32 Windsor Gardens. It's mm -hmm. a quite small um, pen and ink drawing, but it's just that sense of... Paddington's slight anxiety, he's yeah. not quite sure how Mrs. Bird's going to react mm -hmm. to him and they're just hovering outside the door. Oh, that's lovely. And Karen? It's a difficult one to answer. Um, I mean, I loved all the Peggy Fordham illustrations from the original books, but also Bob Alley's mm -hmm. illustrations of the, of the picture books because he brings another dimension to Paddington. I think that's the wonderful thing about illustrators is that the, 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 the writer writes a story, but then the illustrator brings just another dimension to the story. So, mm. yeah. Did you ever, as a child, did you ever draw, illustrate Paddington? No, no, you couldn't do I, I wish I had the talent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, here's another one from Ali, who asks, oh, this is to you, Karen, uh, do you still have the original bear that, ah, yeah, well, the original bear we heard that your father bought at Selfridges for the Christmas present that, 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 that sparked um, everything that happened since. Have you still got that original bear? The answer is yes. Uh, he still lives with the family. Mm -hmm. um, He's too precious with the, he wouldn't ever, we would never put him in a glass case, which is why he's not part of the exhibition. He's quite shy, actually. Oh. Um, but what we do have um, in the exhibition is his trunk with some of his personal belongings. So although you can't meet the bear himself, you can see some of his personal belongings. But the bear is still, bear, still alive yes, and well. Yes, and in, yeah. Good, good. Um, and we've got um, a comment here, which I will read out from Francis, uh, uh, who says that the biggest thrill for me as a child at Christmas was knowing that I would get the latest Paddington book <laughs> under the tree, which I'm sure uh, we all, uh, uh, that resonates with all of us. Um, and we've also got uh, uh, a, a comment, well, it's really addressed to you, um, Karen, from Olivia, who says that uh, I will be storytelling at the British Library as part of the exhibition, and there is, a, uh, of course, a, a big schools and, and uh, a family programme coming up over the summer. Um, so Olivia says I'll be storytelling at the British Library, and I wanted to thank you and your amazing father for creating such a magical, compassionate, and inspiring character. Paddington needs means. Uh, sorry, Paddington means so much uh, to uh, to so many people across the world. We all need to be more Paddington. <laughs> well, Olivia, I could not agree with you more. I, I think that's a, that's a lovely what, what you've written, and, uh, and thank you for being a, a storyteller. <laughs> well, absolutely, and yeah, we all need to be more Paddington. I think is. Uh, uh, a good message for the times. Now here's a, um, <laughs> a more existential question from um, uh, Ibtisim. Is Paddington real? <laughs> How could you even ask that? <laughs> I'm just reading it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, don't, don't blame the messenger. Absolutely Paddington's real. Yes, Absolutely. definitely. You must have, um, I mean, lovely comment there from Olivia, you must have had so many people come up to you, and I'm sure your father, um, when he was alive, had so many people uh, come up to him just just talking about I guess the impact that that, that Paddington had uh, on them as, as children yes. and probably as adults as well they did and some of the stories are just just wonderful and and, and, it's, and it's lovely I mean I, I can't take any of the credit but um, people often share stories of how much Paddington means to them and, and and he does to me too so I understand it yeah yeah mm -hmm. do you do you I'm mean obviously uh, younger and uh, children uh, uh, reading Paddington now are reading it with a different eye from from those children who read the, the story back in uh, 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 back in when they were first published do you get the sense that people are responding to different things in Paddington now or is it is it that kind of universal theme I think it's a universal theme and I think what's quite clever is that although my father started writing the stories back in the, the 1950s 
they kind of moved with the time, so um, uh, that the, the kind of era changed, but Paddington's fundamental, um, what, what made him Paddington's stayed the same. It's just the world around him changed, but he stayed yeah, the same. That's interesting. Yeah. And Alison, what's the most recent Paddington book that we feature in the exhibition? Because as you say, Paddington changed and the context changed. So um, the one you could see in the film called yeah. Paddington at St Paul's, that was published in 2018 and that was the last picture book that Michael Bond wrote himself and that was illustrated by R.W. Alley. Yeah. So we, we do have something slightly later than that. But that, that I think is the one that encapsulates everything because it's 60 years after the first one and it was the last one that Michael Bond uh, himself wrote. Yeah, yeah. And maybe one last one for you, Karen, that, um, of course, as we saw in the film, Paddington appears in, in all sorts of different media, um, and the films especially, I know, have had um, a big effect. You talked mm. about in Peru that, yes. that really people discovered him through, mm. through the movies. That must be, that, for a whole new generation, that must be a common experience to discover Paddington through those films and then yep. can almost work their way back into the books. Yes, oh, definitely. And I think that when he came onto the television, for example, in the 70s, mm. that also introduced um, a, a new, new sort of book, more people you know, reading the books as a result of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, look, we, I'm just checking to see if we have any more questions, and I think that we have got through them all. So... Um, we will, uh, time is ticking on and we, I'm sure we and you all have marmalade sandwiches waiting for you <laughs> on the dinner table. So um, we will draw this to a close. But before we do, um, I do just want to uh, run through a few thanks again, um, of course, to uh, uh, Karen and to Alison for being here with us this evening uh, and to Ria and Liz, uh, who we saw earlier on the film and the Year 4 children, of course, of Argyle uh, Primary School, who came in to shoot specially for us earlier this week week. Uh, uh, to all the teams in the British Library who worked, in this, you, on, worked on this, you heard some of them earlier, it really does take so many people from across the organisation coming together to make something like this happen, and especially, as Alison said, in the, the rather strange circumstances of, of COVID, that was all the more true. Um, to our, our lenders, of course, which includes Karen, our lenders, our supporters, uh, our partners, and of course our sponsors who you heard about earlier, thank you to you. Uh, as a reminder that the exhibition uh, runs through until the end of October, so plenty of time, but come early and come often. Uh, there's a number of events around it, and you can find out all about that from our BL website, and there's a link that will come up shortly, and you can follow that to find out more. So uh, all that remains for me is to say thank you for joining us this evening, and have a great evening.